Today on Delmarva Life, round two of Seaford Pride. More places, more people who make this western Sussex County city an easy one to celebrate. And more reasons why a stop in Seaford is a must if you've never visited. Art is one of those reasons. Art is just important. It feeds the soul. And the Seaford folks behind that art are passionate about helping you find the artist within. We wanted to be welcoming to all the artists to encourage them and, and let them grow with us. We'll visit those quaint little shops where you can find unique treasures. The spa line is our way of having a little bit of fun, I guess, with um, international product. And visit those restaurants where the food is fresh. In front of me is our uh, chicken salad. And the flavors are family favorites. Every flavor that you see or, or feel in the food, it's my mom. Here we go. Delmarva Life Small Town Series Seaford Part 2. Well, as you can probably tell, we are going to visit Seaford again. When we were done yesterday, yes. it didn't seem like we were done. No, we weren't, yeah. as a matter of fact. We have a whole lot more to look into with the city of Seaford, uh, the largest one in Sussex County, our small town series today, part two of Seaford. We're mainly focusing our small town series, Seaford, on the downtown area, and why not? It is buzzing with excitement, and a lot of that buzz is courtesy of an all-volunteer organization called Seaford Tomorrow. The group aims to improve Seaford's downtown business district, turning it into an experiential destination enjoyed by residents and visitors alike. Seaford Tamar is also working with downtown businesses to improve the facades of the buildings through a grant program. Now one of Seaford Tamar's annual events is First Saturdays. Uh, they happen during the month of May uh, through the summer through September. The next one is this Saturday from 4 to 7 p.m. So I guess that'll be the last one of, uh, of, of the, the year. Of, of the, the year, year. Yeah. yeah. And so. the storm will be out of here. Out of the way and everything will be all new. It'll be all better. You know, uh, one of the best known and most loved families of the Seaford area, uh, the, the Allen family. Founded by Charles and Nellie Allen in 1919, Allen Family Foods became a global exporter of premium poultry products. The company packed about 12 million pounds of finished product a week and at one point employed more than 3,000 people. Now. Charles Allen III, or Chick Allen, is a former member of the University of Delaware, the third generation of Allens who attended UD. The Allen family has long provided scholarship programs and funded UD's research facilities, including the Charles C. Allen Jr. Biotechnology Laboratory. Now, in honor of Barbara and Chick Allen and their continued support, Nanacoke Health Services announced their cancer center was being renamed, recognizing their gift of more than a million dollars for cancer care services at the hospital. What a wonderful family. Yeah. Now among the movers and shakers of Seaford, John Hollis moves and shakes many things. Mr. Hollis was a longtime administrator, teacher, and coach in the Seaford School District. In 1976, he founded the Minority Engineering Regional Incentive Training Program, or MERIT. His work mentoring children has earned him dozens of prestigious honors, many more than we can list here, but the most recent being the John H. Taylor Jr. Education Leadership Award from the Delaware State Chamber of Commerce. Now, the Merit Program has been providing academic enrichment and college preparatory opportunities for minority students from the greater Seaford area and across Sussex County. Over 400 Merit students have gone on to obtain college degrees. Uh, Mr. Hollis, as a matter of fact, spearheaded the effort to form the Western Sussex Boys and Girls Club, which is celebrating its 20th year this this month, in Yay. the month of September. Uh, in Hollis Park on Virginia Avenue, this is where the Merit Program meets in Seaford. The Seaford location offers everything from before and after school care to full-size heated indoor pool, full-size athletic gym and weight room, computer and technology center. The Western Sussex Boys and Girls Club has expanded now to a location in Laurel as well, but and I'm sure he's had this conversation with you too. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hollis loves to talk about that original location in Seaford. Oh yeah. 
that was a soybean field before they got started. That's right. Uh, Delaware Representative Danny Short also hails from Seaford, a life member and past chief of the Seaford Volunteer Fire Department. He's been a firefighter with Seaford for more than three decades. He was inducted into the Delaware Fire Service Firefighters Hall of Fame in 1982 and also awarded the Heroic Fireman of the Year Award for saving a life during a swimming accident. In 1995, Mr. Short began a four-year tenure as a Seaford City Councilman, then became mayor, serving four two-year terms before leaving office in March 2006. The following November, he was elected as state representative for the 39th District of Post he has held ever since. There are a lot of amazing people in Seaford. Mm -hmm. and, and we wish we could continue with them all, but it's only an hour show. That's right. <laughs> so, so we're going to move on. Big changes have come to parts of Seaford over the years. Changes for the better, as a matter of fact. It was in 1989 that a Wall Street Journal article dubbed the corner of 3rd and North Street in Seaford, Crack Alley. That is not the case anymore. Today, this is where lives are restored through Delmarva Adult and Teen Challenge. In 2008, Bob Carey opened the doors to the faith-based addiction recovery program. Bob, who himself is a graduate of the program, has expanded the program, which now operates a woman's facility called Home of Hope. It's yeah. in Bridgeville. Doing great things yes. up there in Seaford. Well, yesterday we talked a lot about Seaford's history, and that conversation is a continuing one on a Facebook page dedicated to the times gone by. It's called Seaford, Delaware, A Look Back in Time. People are encouraged to post pictures and stories of life in Seaford. It's run by Jim Bowden, who posts pictures from his personal collection, as well as stories passed down to him over the years. He says he hopes people will enjoy and most of all pass on the legacy of the history to younger generations. Yeah, so be sure to, to post things there. A lot there. of and, great pictures and, on it. Yeah, and if you have some some pictures of Seaford or, or some Seaford memories, please post them on our Facebook page as well. Yeah. Because we would love to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's time to get into the nitty gritty of some of the people and places that make Seaford stand out. Uh, we're going to start with the town's solid connection to music. It's a powerful force, and it's one the Green family is passionate about teaching others. We're going to explore how they do that and get to know the father-daughter team behind the Seaford Music and Education Center. And then we meet the matriarch of that father-daughter duo, who is as equally passionate about creativity. That sparked her desire to open High Street Custom Frame. The goal? To help you keep and treasure your memories in a unique way. We're going to show you. How about the artist within you? We have a stop at Gallery 107, and it may just be what you're looking for to help you celebrate your talents. Oh, you don't have any artistic talent? Well, they can help you with that, too. Uh -huh. It feels good and it smells good when you treat your skin well, and the place to do that here in Seaford is the bath shop at Two Cats in the Yard. I'm Katie Zerilli, and coming up, it just makes sense that we're bringing you here. I love that name. And then food. Let's focus on some of the food you're going to find in secret. First up, every fiber coffee on High Street, good? Oh, no, 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 no. It's great. Grub and friendly faces. What more could you ask for? And from Seaford to El Salvador, Doña Maria's Pupuseria is where you'll find an authentic taste of the Central American country. And the family that prepares the food is so excited to share it with you. We're excited to introduce you to them. Delmarva Life Small Town Series Round 2. Where are we putting the remote today, Jimmy? I'd say just leave it in the, in the middle of Stein Highway. You're not going to need it for <laughs> another hour or so. Delmarva Life will be right back. The following Delmarva Life segments in today's Small Town Series are brought to you by the City of Seaford. Would you agree that there's something magical, something powerful about music? It has the uncanny ability to connect people. And the team behind the first stop in today's small town series, Seaford, understands that. They live it. It's a team that's all in the family, too. 1025 WBOC's Corey Phoebus stopped by the Seaford Music and Education Center on High Street, where they not only help people expand on their musical talent, they help you find it, too. Music is the melodic road to someone's soul with the ability to change, inspire, help connect with others, allow one to reminisce and provoke thoughts and feelings. Once you're able to understand the significance of music, your life will be changed forever. I started uh, playing music, I should say singing, back in 1960. Bye. Howard Green, the director of the Seaford Music Education Center, realized at a young age that he had a passion for music as he was surrounded by it throughout his life. I, I love music. It, it's, 
it's my father played played saxophone and my uncle played drums and they were in New York and they would bring musicians home and my mother would cook and me and my brother would sit at the top of the stairs and listen to these guys jam. So I've been listening to music since I was what, three, four years old. I love music. I can't explain it no better. I love it. Howard, along with his daughter, wanted to spread both knowledge and music throughout their community by coming together with hopes to make their community thrive. My daughter and I <clears throat> sat down and, and, and we looked around and saw that there was nothing in the community for the youth. So we decided that we would open this up. While Howard is a singer and pianist at heart, he ensures students can learn pretty much any instrument while teaching them fundamentals and basing them on theory. I teach uh, piano. I have someone else coming in that teaches guitar and bass and also saxophone. Uh, I, and I can do trumpet also. Howard and his daughter saw specific needs in their community, so they decided to take action by blending music and academics. Howard obviously covering music and his daughter Markeisha tutoring students in multiple subjects. There's a lot of students out here that, that uh, have a talent for music but haven't explored it. And so that, that's why I opened this up for that. We saw the opportunity uh, to improve The education, you know, the, the, to improve the, the students, uh, I don't know, ability to achieve, you know. Some students find their love of music through tutoring and others find their love of academics through music. With the, uh, the tutoring, there's uh, two, two young uh, gentlemen that come in here that my daughter sued. One was failing math. Now he's getting A's and B's. He did last year and he graduated. The other is having a, a reading problem and, along with the map, and now he's passing also. That's, to me, that's an improvement in the neighborhood. Even if it's just one person, it's still an improvement, you know? And then that, hopefully, they'll spread out and tell someone else about it. Seaford Music and Education Center offers a wide variety of help and guidance currently assisting students from the ages of four to 40 with SAT prep courses. What a wonderful place that helps the community learn, explore, and discover which all came from a passionate man and his daughter's desire to help others better their education. I don't know, you think Corey enjoyed that story just a little bit? Uh, that just touches on Howard and Marquise's experience, talent, and willingness to help others. Now you can find out more about them at the Seaford Music and Education Center on DelmarvaLife.com. Just click on what's happening today. On yesterday's show, we learned about the mission of the Seaford Museum to preserve and present Seaford's past. And you know, we all have pieces of our past we want to keep alive. Sometimes they can come in the form of pictures, perhaps papers. They can be just about anything, just really. Just about anything. And a good way to assure their longevity is to put them in a frame. Oh, have we got just the place for you to do that. Now, we're not encouraging you to just go out and buy the first frame you see. We're encouraging you to visit High Street Custom Frame in downtown Seaford because you will come out with a piece designed just for you. Picture this. You've got in your hands just that, a picture, maybe a work of art or an artifact, something you want to preserve and display. Take a visit to High Street Custom Frame in downtown Seaford and, like others before you, be amazed at how the experts inside can help make your piece pop. They're like, oh my gosh, this is such a quaint little shop. Like, this is awesome, and look at the work that you're doing. Annette Green is the shop's owner. She started it two and a half years ago after finishing a nursing career, having worked as a framer decades earlier. We started on a Black Friday of all days. Brave heart that we are. And they haven't looked back. Well, except for when people bring in historical pieces, which they love. The older, the more exciting for us. We like to hear the stories behind the photos because we're not native to the South. So it's fascinating to us because this is such a big historical area. They'll take care of whatever you bring in, from needlework to items for shadow boxes and more. 
Annette is dedicated to making sure the project turns out exactly the way you like it. So we always try to give two or three different options. Um, we first ask uh, if they have any ideas on, on how they want to frame it um, and try to go along those lines and then I'll do something totally opposite and, and see what their reaction is and then maybe something kind of in the middle and um, just kind of give them a different perspective on, on the piece. This is a frame Annette just completed and it shows you how custom made her projects can be. These are two coins that a grandmother gave her granddaughter in the late 1800s and it's framed so that you can see the front and back of them. She's not only focused on making sure you have something designed with your needs in mind, she's also using materials that will conserve your piece to keep it in tip-top shape for as long as you can imagine. When you buy just a regular pre-made frame, usually it just has clear glass so you can have damage to the photo itself. And also, um, without any matting, that photo can stick to the glass if there's any moisture. Um, and so you never know when that photo, that piece of artwork, um, is gonna become very valuable to you. Getting a nice finished product like this is simple. Go in and talk with Annette, then you've just gotta let her do her creative thing, and then in about two weeks, you'll have a new heirloom to hang in your home. The best part, of course, is when it's completed, they come in to pick it up and they're like, ah, oh, like I'm so glad I brought that in. If you're one of those that may be a little intimidated to walk in these doors, Annette says, Fear not. She'll greet you with a smile and listen to your stories, and then work with you to save those stories in a creative and charming way. I'm retired. This is my choice. I'm kind of uh, semi-retired. Um, I do this because I enjoy it. And so I'm not, I'm not out to make a big buck. I'm here to help people preserve um, their favorite pieces. It just takes one quick visit for your memories to last a lifetime. What an artistic family, right? Just a reminder, Annette is married to Howard Green of Seaford Music and Education. Now, Annette says other bigger frame stores often send your pieces away to be framed. Well, of course, that increases the chances of it getting lost or damaged, but guess what? Annette says all of her work done right there inside her shop. And it makes such a difference when you have a professional frame your pictures and items. Yeah. All right, we've covered Seaford's history. We've covered a few of Seaford's restaurants and businesses, but what about its art scene? Well, if it hadn't been for the last decade, we might not have a place to take you. Fortunately, Gallery 107 popped up about eight years ago. Delmarva Life's Katie Zerilli takes us inside. Back before late 2011, early 2012, if you were in Seaford and looking for a place to view art like this, you were just about out of luck. Christina Darby knows. That's what happened to her. I appreciate art. I think I have a good eye for art. I think I understand art. So she asked where the local art galleries were and was told there were none. So she and other art enthusiasts formed the Nanticoke River Arts Council. They received an anonymous donation and made a gallery happen. We have oils, we have watercolors, we have jewelry, we have wood turning. Uh, we have a, it's a, an art called pouring which is very interesting. They were first in a smaller space and later moved into this spot on High Street. And the artwork has kept on coming. And the longer we were here, the more artists that came. And we're having artists come all the time that are interested in showing. And to say that those who visit are impressed with each unique piece would be an understatement. Christina says they're almost always taken aback. I guess the first word that comes to mind is wow and all the artists are local. Tammy Kearney is one of those local artists. She actually didn't start painting until later in life, despite always dreaming of doing so. This gallery was the first place she ever showed her work publicly. So it was a big deal, and I was, I was apprehensive. I didn't know if it would be well received. Um, but this is the thing, when you're an outsider artist with no formal training, we get very intimidated. So we, that's the goal of our group is we wanted to be welcoming to all the artists to encourage them and, and let, let them grow with us. And they've seen some of that growth and are jazzed about it. We're here in the Gallery 107 classroom space with Homer Proctor, who's only been painting for about seven years and he's incredible at it. Homer, tell us a little bit about what you're painting today. Uh, 
we have a model here that uh, uh, Cal, he, he, I painted him three or four times before, and uh, but uh, this is kind of a different scenario of what I'm normally painting, but uh, uh, it's a challenge and I'm up for it, so. <laughs> How did you know you wanted to start painting? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 just something you always want, you know. Just like, how do you know you want to do the job you're doing? That's right. You know, so, uh, I don't know. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's something I wanted to try. If you're like Tammy or Homer, they've got opportunities for you to give it a try. They offer numerous classes that you're invited to be part of. If you say that you cannot do anything, I can't draw a straight line, we hear that all the time. We don't draw straight lines, and if we draw a straight line, we use a ruler usually. The council is going to continue to develop the gallery and make it part of the community because to them, engaging with art makes a happy heart. I think art is important everywhere, whether small town, large metropolis. Art is just important. It feeds the soul. So the next time your soul is craving something creative, check out Gallery 107 celebrating established artists and occasionally inspiring new ones. A Gallery 107 is open Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays or by appointment or chance. For more specific hours, visit our website. They also offer scholarships to local art students. That's wonderful. Yeah. That is wonderful. It is Seaford's one-stop shop if you're looking for healthier skin. From lotions to fine soaps to essential oils and more, the bath shop at Two Cats in the Yard has you covered, and it's located right on South Conwell Street. And Delmarva Life's Katie Zerilli takes us there now to show us just a small glimpse of all this place has to offer. The bath shop at Two Cats in the Yard has been the stop for exquisite skin care here in Seaford for almost 16 years. You can smell the goodness as you walk in, and here to explain some of the products you guys have to offer is Sonia Mahaffey. What do we got here today? Well, first and foremost, we are a botanically based um, skin care um, provider. All of our product is made in the USA with the exception of one of our lines. Um, so if we were to start at the beginning, what we have out here, just to show you quickly, these are our bath and kitchen products. They come in a variety of botanicals. This particular one is coconut and ginger. They are all shea butter based for the lotions. Um, next we have is Caprina, which is, I believe, out of South Carolina. Um, it is our goat milk line. It is for sensitive skin. Um, this is our spa line. This comes out of North Carolina. It is Greenwich Bay Trading Company. And the spa line is our way of having a little bit of fun, I guess, with um, international product. Um, here we have, it is Australian um, made product. It is a triple milled soap, and again, all botanically based and then we're getting into our household items mm -hmm. um, here for air care um, sachets and kitchen cleaning products these i cannot say enough about these are non-toxic non-chemically based wow. safe for animals safe for children and they smell great that must this, be something people want oh people love it and this here i love this is the all-purpose cleaner it is the basil blue sage. It is by far my favorite. It smells fabulous. Of course, this here is our most popular line. Ooh. This line has a body butter, has a huge um, block of bar soap, and of course it has a smaller hand one to match. Ah, so going, moving on, yeah. this line here is our olive oil line. It is called Alivia Care. Wow. Olive oil based soap. It comes in both liquid and bar form, mm -hmm. and the lotions are great. This, the biggest thing that I love about this line is that when you put this lotion on, 45 minutes, an hour down the road, you still smell like mm. this, even if you washed your hands. I'm dying you, for a little taste. I was gonna say, you I should try this out. A it treat it is so non-oily, it is very, very absorbent. It oh, stays with nice you a long time. And, and olive oil traditionally is known, especially anybody from the Mediterranean will tell you, Olive oil prevents cancer, mm -hmm. prevents aging. It is great for both oily and dry skin. It, it does it all. So in, in the world of well-rounded skin care that is just basic and to the point, this Olivia Care is it. We have carried it for 16 years and we still carry it. That's awesome.
awesome. Yeah, it's and a really good line. So it really seems like you guys have something for everybody. I mean, you only showed us a little bit and you have right. so much more here. We do, we do. And all, we try to make sure that our product lines are, are good for both oily skin, dry skin, and skin issues. Excellent, so so many unique things here at Two Cats. We have it. All right, good stuff. Thank you so much for showing me and making me smell and feel. You will smell like a good charm. when you go home this evening. Thanks so You'll much. be like, ah, that stuff's so good. Excellent. <laughs> Back to you. Thanks guys. for coming. <laughs> I want to smell that. The Bath Shop at Two Cats in the Yard also offers free gift bags with any purchase, and they are excited for you to come in and check it out. And I'm excited to go check it out too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Smell-o-vision would be a great invention, though. Yeah. We put that together. <laughs> Remember this, Jimmy? Oh. Mom's mac and cheese made by our friends at Every Fiber Coffee and Seaford. As you can see, there's cheese, and, and then there's cheese, and then there's more cheese. The stuff dreams are made of. We <laughs> couldn't get enough of this, and that pan was gone in seconds when we offered to everybody here at WBOC. So you know if we're having a show about Seaford, a stop at Every Fiber Coffee on High Street is a must. Obviously, a great cup of coffee is a given, but as you just saw, with the mac and cheese, there's so much more to the menu. So we sent 1025 WBOC's Corey Phoebus to Every Fiber Coffee to show you. Well, you know, when uh, that time of day comes and you're dragging through the last few hours of work and you wish that you had that fresh cup of coffee to get you through the rest of it, well, luckily, Every Fiber Coffee Company is here, located right on High Street. And I'm joined by my good friend, Alan Cranston. Alan, how are you, man? How you doing? I'm all right. So. Let's see. I mean, a coffee coffee shop, man. This isn't just a coffee shop anymore. This is like a restaurant, a yep. destination. Yep. And you've been so gracious as to prepare a meal for us. So before we jump into anything, I'm not gonna stare at this food the whole interview. I'm just gonna start eating it now. What, what, what are we looking at? What's your menu looking like? All right, so what we've got here is a couple of our staples. Uh, what's in front of you is our ultimate BLT. Okay. In front of me is our uh, chicken salad. And in between us is our bruschetta. Very good. So can we just go ahead and just jump right into jump this? Jump right into that. Mm -hmm. Now this uh, this is pepperoni on a BLT, correct? So yep, there's pepperoni, there's a little bit of Monterey Jack cheese, and a little bit of everything on there. So, you know, it's uh, sourdough bread, it's nice and toasted. That's awesome. Now you guys have some new drinks and stuff as well, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, what do we got on that? We've got, uh, we've got some new frappes on, we've got some new smoothies and energy infusion drinks. We got a lot of cool stuff coming. All right, now, I hate to say this, but you guys are a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. What makes you different than every other coffee shop? Well, this has become more of a destination than just a coffee shop. Okay. Um, you know, with, with, and here are the drinks now. Fantastic, thank you. I'm assuming smoothie, energy drink. Yep, frappe. frappe. All right, which one are you going for? Um, just grab what you want. Okay, cool, I'll go with this one then. I got this. So All this right. is our raspberry smoothie. Okay. That is our coconut cookie frappe and one of our energy infusion drinks. Fantastic. So you guys are a destination. You guys are turning over menu items quickly. You've taken into account how busy people are, mm -hmm. especially right here on High Street. Yeah. How has this idea even come up? Uh, well, when we started designing this whole thing, one of the biggest things that talking to all the businesses, talking to the hospital and all the medical staff that are that surround us real, real close, they don't have a lot of time. Okay. You know, in and out, you know, 30 minutes. So we designed a menu around that that would, that would work. And you know, that, was, that was important to us to make sure people could get in, do their thing and get out. If you are catering to people that are too busy mm -hmm. to wait for a menu item, what makes you think that they could just stop in and enjoy a leisurely afternoon lunch? Well, I mean, it's, it's different. It's, it's sure. not what you're used to. So folks, I want you to imagine being in a rush, heading to work. All you have to do is make a quick phone call to every fiber saying, hey, I get there at nine o'clock. Can you have my coffee on my desk? And you guys would be able to take care of that. Yeah, yeah we're gonna be doing big orders and stuff like that. We also do call in. So if you are running through town and you're in a hurry, you know, call it in, we'll have it ready when you get here. And if you do have a few extra minutes, stop. I mean, the history alone in this place is incredible. I remember last time you guys were on air with us, seven different floors that you guys mm -hmm. had to rip up. Yeah. You were able to reclaim a little bit of it yeah. to turn it into a wall. Mm -hmm. And that bar top behind you as well. So there's a lot of really cool history-based nuances that you've tied into a really modern feel. It, it's almost like a place that you want to hang out. Yeah. It's got a kind of a modern industrial feel to it. It's very cool. So, I mean, every time you turn a corner of this place, you're going to see something new, something different that you didn't see the time before. Mm -hmm. So I think you guys are doing a great job, Alan. Yeah. This is great. And of course, they are a sponsor of our morning show on 1025 WBOC. So Alan and I have uh, gotten pretty close over this time. But thank you so much for giving yeah. me time to thank you. spend with you and to, mm -hmm. you know, enjoy some delicious food. Yeah. And it is delicious. Guys, maybe I'll bring some back. Probably not. 
Probably not. Probably and not. I, I, I love the name Every Fiber. Um, it's an, an homage, if you will, yeah. to uh, the DuPont plant. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. So that's kind of cool, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we want to give a, a quick shout out to everyone at Every Fiber Coffee watching this small town series right now. They're having a party. Hey, save us some food. Yeah, because Corey didn't. Right. We've learned over the course of the last two days that there are so many different aspects of Seaford that make it unique. Now it's time to tell you about one more place. How cool is it that Seaford is home to an authentic Salvadoran restaurant? Doña Maria's Pupaseria on High Street has been in existence for about two and a half years now, and owners say residents have really grown accustomed to the ethnic flavors. The Marvel Life's Katie Zarelli gives us a taste. Stepping into Doña Maria's Pupuseria is like traveling out of Seaford and into El Salvador, minus the jet lag and the heavy suitcases. This place is just about as authentic as it gets. What is Doña Maria's? Well, Doña Maria's is my mom to honor her. Doña Maria brought her family here from El Salvador a number of years ago. She also brought a passion for cooking and sharing food from her home country. Opening this restaurant has been her dream. This is her dream. This is what she fought for so many years. And um, every flavor that you see or, or feel in the food, it's my mom. This May will mark three years that the restaurant has existed. Their story has not been without challenges, says one of the owners, Mirla Aleman. A big challenge being getting folks to try out unfamiliar ethnic food. We want everybody to, that sits here to taste a part of El Salvador. You know, um, it's not a part of Mexico or Guatemala. We're El Salvador, a different country, a, a different culture. Fortunately, patrons are welcoming this cuisine with open arms or mouths. The menu's most popular item, the pupusas. Pupusas is um, about a pancake, like a, a pancake size um, tortilla stuffed with either pork and cheese, chicken and cheese, um, different meat, shrimp, uh, but we also cater to the people that don't eat meat. All right, so I've never made a pupusa before. I actually had no idea what one was before I walked in here, but now I'm going to try it. Luckily, though, I've got Mirla here who's going to show me how it's done. What do I do? Grab masa or the uh, maseca dough. How much? Corn. A little more than that. More than Just that? More. Yes. Now roll it in a, in a little bowl. Okay. And make a hole in the middle. Now, which that do you want? Pork. Pork. Let's do it. Okay. Just gonna put, put all that in there. All right. All right. So now close it back up. Close it back up. Okay. Here we go. Oop. Make sure that no holes are left Can't in there because holes. if not, the meat is gonna come out. Oh no. Okay. Perfect. Now you're gonna make a tortilla. You have to put a little bit of force in it. She says a small percentage of Americans in the Seaford area had had Salvadoran food before they opened. People come and ask me, do, I, do you have tacos? And I'm like, uh, no, we don't have tacos, but you can try pupusas. But now she says her customer base is about 60% American and 40% Latino. We want Doña Maria's to be a house for everybody that wants, wants to come here and see what we can offer to them and taste our food. By tasting the food, you're sharing in Doña Maria's dream which at this point, she's passed on to her family. My sister has decided that, okay, I'm gonna put my, the pants on and I'm gonna continue to, I'm gonna continue with this that my mom has left for us. Doña Maria might not be as involved as she once was, but without her, this place wouldn't be possible. I will never thank my mother enough for giving us the opportunity to be here and being where we are. And I just thank her all the time for being the, the person that she is for us. A person with fearless faith, dedicated to caring for her kin and serving Seaford the best of El Salvador. That food really sounds good. It really, it looks good. It looks good. And I love the family story behind it too. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, Doña Maria offers special pupusa deals on Tasty Tuesday too. Yeah, and they also say you can order food online. We'll provide you with a link on our website. So what do you say? say yeah. uh, we're in Salisbury. Yep, yep, yep. Hop in the car. Right. Get to right, Seaford right. in probably about 20 minutes. Oh. 30 minutes. Yeah, about, yeah, about get some, that. Get some coffee, learn some music. I'll make a run down to Pupasuria. There you go. Okay, we got this all figured out. It's going to be a good evening tonight.